I'm just waiting for the grass. Melanie a message. She's doing scripture and the children's talk and not here. Just want to make sure she's okay. Just want to make sure she's okay. Here she is. She's here. Good morning, everyone. I figure if I just keep waiting a little bit longer, a little bit longer, there'll be another hundred people coming through the door. It's so wonderful to watch the flow and the energy and the conversations happening as we come into this time of worship together. Special welcome to those of you who are with us also online and virtual welcome to worship and to First Church, United Church of Christ in downtown Phoenix. And for those of you who are here today, um, who are visiting, and you are many today, you are most welcome in this place. Um, and Pei has a welcome bag for you. If you haven't gotten one, if you'd like one, you can put your hand up and she'll come and bring one to you. Or you can grab one also on your way out if that's more comfortable for you. There's a card on the bag, and if you'd like to fill it out, you can sign in and make your presence known and put it in the offering basket when it comes around. We simply just want to greet you and welcome you to First Church. We have a few announcements this morning as we get going. Um, every single one of you are invited, if you have time and don't have plans after church, to stay and help us to make sandwiches for the cooling center heat respites that we have for the summer and also for our unhoused pantry. And we hope that you'll be able to join us in the hall afterwards of sandwich making. There is a group um, led by Adam and Grace and Jordan who are going tubing on Saturday by the 8th. So if you're interested, uh, Grace, if you want to raise your hand and Adam, if you raise your hand, you can see them and make your way to cool off in the Salt River on a Saturday. We have a movie coming up, Watching the Letter, um, written by Pope Francis, and we'll hear from people around the world and the effects of climate change on their lives. We'll have supper together and watch the movie and a discussion. And today is our birthday. Yay! <laughs> So there's three things that sort of align today. On June the 25th, it is uh, the birthday of this church, 1917. It is also the birthday of our denomination, as it for 1957, and it's ordained. So that's cool. So. There had to be something in there, the spirit movement, as I got called to this church and found out June 25th aligned in this way. So what a wonderful day. And we're going to celebrate together afterwards with cake. So you can make a sandwich, take a bite of cake, make some sandwiches, take a bite of cake. Um, and there's some watermelon for those of you who are gluten-free too or just don't want cake. <laughs> I don't know who doesn't want cake. Um, we are on our um, theme, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. It's the last one in the series uh, today. I invite you to bring yourself fully into this place, and one another in community, to inhale a real cleansing breath of the Holy Spirit into your being fully, and to exhale all that has been in your week all that weighs heavy. 
and for all the reasons that you have come today. That it's a reminder that indeed God draws alongside you and meets you where you are. Listen to the ringing of the bell as we come into sacred space. God, we give you praise and thanks this day as we come before you into worship and we are reminded of all that we value and stand for as a church and a community. We give you thanks for those who have gone before us, generations, ancestors, that has brought us to this place and this day. We give you thanks that we stand together as a church that is open and affirming and we celebrate that designation and in that way and in the many ways that we extend welcome and hospitality and inclusion the same way, God, that your son Christ did to so many. Bring us into this place together. Gather us in, God, as your people. In your name and your presence we pray. Amen. Let us stand and body your spirit to sing. church and happy birthday I must say you all look pretty darn good for 106 <laughs> oh. okay all right now okay please join me together in the call to community we come today representing all the majesty of creation Our first beautiful Blessed and beloved, all made in the image of the creator of all things. We come today called to this time and this place by an infinite God. We come today transgender, non-binary, bisexual, two-spirit, lesbian, intersex, 
sex, gay, queer, ally. We come today knowing you care for us. We come today knowing that you and the others who us, you comfort us. Thank you. I don't know if yours is on either. Oh, happy day. Just sing. Come on, let's sing. <laughs> when Jesus walked, when Jesus walked, when Jesus walked, he washed my feet. Okay, we'll just give it back to you because it's not working anyway. <laughs> What? Oh, hello. Yes. <laughs> all right. We're going to try this one more time, all right? <laughs> all right. Happy day. Oh, happy day. When Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, when Jesus washed, you washed my fears away. Jesus washed, oh, he washed my sins away.
day. church. Uh, we are weary and exhausted by the divisions, the, the, the hate, and anxiety producing rhetoric. The few voices may be few, the voices may be few, but they are loud, painful, and divisive. They distract us from God's way of healing and forgiveness. We sometimes lose hope that we can be united by the one's love that binds us uh, to each other and to God. You might please pray with me for, uh, with the prayer of transformation. Um, loving God, loving gracious God, we have failed to honor you in the great diversity of the human family, yet we have longed to be known and accepted for who we are. We have desired to live in freedom yet we have built walls between ourselves and others. We have been silent when we have witnessed people being dishonored because of their truth. Please help forgive us ourselves for the harsh things that we have said and thought about ourselves and others. Give us eyes to see you and as you are revealed in all people. Strengthen us for the work in reconciliation rooted in love. Restore us in your image to be beloved community. United in our diversity, we seek change from inside out, starting with ourselves. Each person is a unique and beautiful expression of God's divine light and love. May we become God's instruments of reconciliation and healing. Amen. Amen. Good morning, First Church. So she said, see, your sister-in-law has gone back to her people and to her goods. Return after your sister-in-law. But Ruth said, do not press me to leave you or to turn back from following you. Where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge. Your people shall be my people, and your God, 
my God. Where you die, I will die. There will I be buried. May the Lord do thus, and so do me, and more as well. Even death parts me from you. When Naomi saw that she was determined to go with her, she said no more to her. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view. Even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view, we know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. All this is from God, who reconciled us to, to God's self through Christ, has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting the message of reconciliation to us. So we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making this appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. The word of the Lord. Lectura Sagrada de Ruth, uh, uh, capítulo 1, versos 15 a 18. Mira, dijo Noemi, tu cuñada se vuelve a su pueblo y a sus dioses, vuélvete con ella. Pero Ruth re respondió, no insistas en que te abandone o en que me separe de ti, porque iré a donde tú vayas, y viviré donde tú vivas. Tu pueblo será mi pueblo, y tu Dios será mi Dios. Moriré donde tú mueras, y ahí seré sepultada. Que me castigue el Señor con toda severidad, si me, si me separa de ti, algo que no sea la muerte. Al ver Noemi, que Ruth estaba tan decidi, decidida a acompañarla, no le insistió más. Y de segundo Corintios, capítulo 5, versos 26, no, um, 16 al 20. Así que de ahora en adelante no consideramos a nadie según criterios meramente humanos. Aunque antes conocimos a Cristo de esta manera, ya no lo conocemos así. Por lo tanto, si alguno está en Cristo, está una nueva creación. Lo viejo ha pasado, ha llegado ya lo nuevo. Todo esto proviene de Dios, quien por medio de Cristo nos reconcilió consigo mismos y nos dio el ministerio de la reconciliación. Esto es que en Cristo Dios estaba reconciliando al mundo consigo mismo, no tomándole en cuenta su, sus pecados y encargando, encargándonos a nosotros el mensaje de la reconciliación. Así que somos embajadores de Cristo, como si Dios los exhorta, exhortara a ustedes por medio de nosos, nosotros. En nombre de Cristo, les rogamos que se reconcilien con Dios. La palabra de Dios. Demos gracias a Dios. <laughs> I think this is on. Kids? We have some kids today? Oh. 
You know what? Two is the perfect number because I have two signs for you to hold up. What's your name? Ersa? Ezra Rodriguez. Oh, he's your cousin. <laughs> okay, well, we're kind of talking about family today, so that's good. Okay. So, okay. Can. Ezra, do you know how to read? Can, can you tell me what that word is? It's a big word. Kingdom. You're going to be a teacher, huh? And it's got a picture of a crown. And Jesus talked a lot about the kingdom of God. Do you know what a kingdom is like? Tell me about a kingdom. Who's in charge? The queen. All right, I like that. <laughs> I like that, the queen. <laughs> okay. Sometimes the queen and sometimes the king. Yeah, but they're, they're like the total bosses and everybody has to do what they say. And they wear crowns, okay? And Jesus used to talk about the kingdom of heaven, but what's interesting is he didn't talk about it that way. He would talk about things like baking bread, sweeping floors, growing crops, finding lost sheep, even giving people enough pay so that they can have enough to eat every night, even if they were only able to work for a couple hours. The kingdom that Jesus talked about didn't sound like the kind of kingdom that we think of. So some people like to use this word instead to, to mean the kind of kingdom that Jesus was talking about. And what does that say? Kingdom. They took the G out. Yeah. But they didn't just take the G out. They left a different word there, kin. What does kin mean? To be all together. That's a good guess. You guys are kin. Yeah, family. That's it. Kin, kin means family. So when we talk about the kingdom of God that Jesus was talking about, we often talk about the kingdom. And some people hear that word, and not just the kids. I think a lot of people get confused by it. Um, so now we know when we use that word, we mean the kind of kingdom Jesus talked about where everybody is treated with love and respect like family and not just like there's a king and a queen and, and they're the boss. But everybody has rights and everybody has value. Okay? You pray with me? Ezra, can we close our eyes to help us focus, okay? Gracious God, we call you father and mother because you treat us as your children. Help us always remember that we are all family, that we are all working for the kingdom the place where we all recognize each other as brother and sister. Help us to love each other as you loved us. Amen. Thank you.
call you holy. Your name is holy. You are so holy to us. We call you holy. Your name is holy. Holy you are and holy you holy you are so holy to us we call you holy your name is holy is righteous you are so righteous to us we call you righteous your name is righteous righteous you are and righteous you will be so righteous to us. We call you righteous. Your name is righteous. Righteous you are and righteous you'll be. Great. So there's a few technical issues today. It always feels like there's a strong message trying to come through when that happens. And so don't be distracted by those things when there's a strong sort of calling, I think, on us as community and as we celebrate um, our anniversary together as a church of 106 years together and the denomination. It is also the price we pay as a congregation when we rent to people. So someone used our space throughout the week and it didn't go back to the same way as it was when they arrived. And so there was a lot of movement and trying to get things together this morning. And so hats off uh, to Josh, to Brian, to Noah in the back of trying to get it all set back up again for us this morning. 
Today is the final in the series that we've been about from the inside out, that we're inwardly cultivated and we're outwardly focused. So we've talked about a couple of things, about cultivating others, the work of welcome and hospitality, the cultivation of self being reminded that we are rooted first in the same origin story of God's love for us, created in, by, and for love. Last week, cultivating justice, the work of restoration, and today, cultivating beloved community. From the inside, we know that we grow and develop. It is also what happens with plants as seeds are planted beneath the earth and as they begin to be cultivated in the depths of the soil. And then it is this outward expression that we see from the inside out. The inside work of cultivation we know is hard work. Sometimes it's struggle. Sometimes we're even called to sacrifice, to share in corporates, mutuality and reciprocity of this hard work of cultivation. And nature has been our teacher throughout this series. Today it's going to be the trees that are our teacher. They communicate to each other via hormone-like compounds. They do that through their root system underground where we can't see what's going on. When a tree is under distress or being attacked by insects, maybe that's what's happening right now in Nevada with all the crickets, it will send a distress signal downward through these compounds to let the other trees know, get prepared, this is coming your way. And then the trees, with that warning, they can manufacture a chemical that helps to protect them from what is coming their way. Trees in a forest are interconnected with the subterranean network of fungal strands that inhabit their roots. The fungus forage for the mineral nutrients that are needed for the trees, and then they deliver them. This fungal bridge may form between individual trees so that all the trees in the forest are connected, even if they're not of the same species and variety. This fungal network appears to redistribute the wealth, so to speak, between all the trees so that they can all live. There's some unity there in their survival, a mutual sort of flourishing that they experience. Yes, of course, there's conflict in forests, and some live and some don't, but there's also this interdependence and this negotiation reciprocity that creates then that they can all not just survive, but they thrive. What a beautiful picture of beloved community through the trees. We sense beloved community in the story of Ruth and Naomi, Community can be even two. In a few short verses we learn, previous to the reading of today, of the death of the father and two sons, which is grief for Naomi, for Ruth, and for Orpah. Devastating for these women who live in this world that is run by males. They need men in order to have land, in order to survive and thrive themselves in the time period that they live. Orpah returns to her family of origin as Naomi requests, and Ruth, she refuses and she stays with her mother-in-law. And that's where we get those famous words, where you go, I will go. Where you lodge, I will lodge, and your God, my God. Imagine taking those vows for each other in community, those vows that would lead us to this connectedness in community that ties us to each other like trees in mutual care and concern. We are here for one another, not just ourselves. Cultivating beloved community is difficult to imagine if we've never experienced that kind of community 
where everyone thrives, where everyone can show up as their authentic selves, where it's that kingdom kind of place that both Jesus spoke of and Melanie explained today, where it's okay not to be okay, where you find forgiveness and grace in utter abundance, where gifts are acknowledged and expressed and received, and where gratitude abounds. Have you ever experienced just a glimpse of that kind of beloved community? Where have you established maybe roots in a particular community and seen that community flourish? If you've ever glimpsed a bit of it, what was it that that community valued? What was important to that community and important to everyone that they shared? And how in that community were differences between people honored? And how did that community interact with the natural created world and order of things? This beloved community, this terminology, it really comes from Martin Luther King Jr. in the civil rights movement. And many have adopted that language from him. He says this, the end is reconciliation. The end is redemption. The end is the creation of the beloved community. It is this type of spirit and this type of love that can transform opposers into friends. It is agape, which is understanding goodwill for all. It is an overflowing love which seeks nothing in return. It is the love of God working in the lives of all. This is the love that may well be the salvation of our civilization. I can get into that kind of salvation. You see, we haven't arrived anywhere. We haven't arrived at a place of beloved community, sadly, but we're striving, forever striving, cultivating beloved community is the work of reconciliation, as Paul spoke in 2 Corinthians, when he spoke about no longer regarding each other from this sort of human point of view, because we know Christ now, so it's different for us. Everything old has passed away, he says, and everything has become new in Christ. All of this from God, who reconciled us to God and given us the ministry of reconciliation. Well, first of all, with that particular scripture reading, it is an ideal. Can we really stop seeing each other from a human point of view? I don't know. I don't think I'm very good at that. But I do love this idealistic Paul who has this vision for community what I do know is that cultivating anything is hard work. Cultivating beloved community is this work of reconciliation. It is difficult for us to have that kind of vision that King had and that Paul had if we've never seen it or experienced it. This is the call, I think, for us as a church to create beloved community Yet we know that the church has often been the place of pain, the place of trauma for so many, rather than a place of reconciliation. No wonder so many people are turning away from instead of towards the church for community. During the time that I worked as the chaplain at a school, there is a parent that still stands out in my memory today. Her daughter was given a full scholarship to attend this private boarding school. They lived in what was called the, the township and she was recommended by her school for this scholarship and to interview for it because of her high work ethic and her excellence in academic pursuits. Her mother was with her for the interview and she explained that it was the two of them and she didn't have a job, she didn't work. Of course, she wanted the very best for her daughter in education and in opportunity. 
to, to excel. And this dream was her, also her mother's dream to be in a private boarding school setting and to be able to be the hope of the two of them. We interviewed hundreds of students together with their parents. This mother I'll never forget. The way she came poised and she was dressed impeccably. As if she was gonna walk into a company boardroom and start the meeting for the day. Her appearance made it difficult to believe that her daughter was in need of a scholarship and this is their story. She followed up her words of not having a job with this. She said, I get up every morning and I get dressed just like this, as if I'm going to work. One day I will. I start every day as if I already have that job. It was a dress rehearsal, a dress rehearsal for her for what she envisioned one day would be hers. First church, friends, family, community. I think this is kind of like a dress rehearsal for us, for a beloved community. We haven't arrived, we haven't gotten there, we haven't fulfilled the dream of Paul or of Martin Luther King Jr. We haven't fully experienced what it means to be a part of beloved community, but we're gonna keep dressing up every day as if we do. What does this beloved community look like? What is it that we value in beloved community? And how is God calling us today after 106 years? We're called to create community where all are welcome, accepted, and belong. We don't always get it right. This beloved community is messy work. Sometimes we use our privileges as power. Sometimes we get caught up in feeling good about ourselves and what we're doing. We say we're inclusive, that we're spiritual, that we're justice seeking. In fact, we're seeking all three of them. We're still seeking to be inclusive. We're still seeking to be a spiritual community. We're still seeking after justice. Through the years, this community has sought after to make commitments and covenants with certain designations, one of them being just peace. We're not there yet. We're still getting there to what that means to be a church of justice, of peace, and of looking after the environments. We sought covenant with what it means to be wise, welcoming, inclusive, supportive, and engaged for mental health. We're not wise, but we're getting there. We might be getting wiser, we hope. We made a commitment a while ago to be a church of sanctuary for immigrants, for refugees, for those seeking asylum. Based on the laws of our country, there's much advocacy still needed to do and was brought up this week in a couple of circles of maybe we need to shift and be doing some advocacy. This doesn't seem to be working out for people, this dream. And a long time ago, this church voted and committed and covenant to be open and affirming. We are and we aren't. We're still getting there. In all of these ways, we're seeking these designations and to live into these covenants that we've committed to. But this is what we value, and this is how we feel God has called us to be. These designations are part of our striving to form beloved community. If beloved community is what we are called to create, then it's gonna be some hard work. And anything worth doing is gonna involve some struggle and some sacrifice. Beloved community is the moment of the Spirit bringing us all together, not in assimilation, not in privilege and power, but in extravagant hospitality extended to each other. Because we all believe our origin story that we're created in love, by love, and for love. This makes justice possible. 
and beloved community thrive for everyone, human and non-human alike. It is the work of reconciliation. If we're serious about this work of reconciliation, it means that we're gonna have to confess our sins and of the past to bring it together. And so in a brave way, I'm gonna ask you to confess as beloved community. We at First Church are a Christian spiritual community and we seek to be beloved community. Won't you read with me? We ask forgiveness through our 106 years for the times when people did not experience that welcome, when the power of privileges took up space in the center and we lost our vision. We seek reconciliation from the past that in the name of freedom of religion, we took that freedom from others. We recommit ourselves today to beloved spiritual community of extravagant welcome and hospitality to the inclusion and seeking justice. On September the 2nd, 1957, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. visited Highlander Folk School in Tennessee. Part of the school's mission was to help prepare civil rights workers to challenge unjust laws and racist policies that discriminated against people of African descent. Dr. King delivered the main speech that day, honoring the school's 20th, 5th anniversary as part of the meeting. Folk singer Peter Seeger got up with his banjo. He plucked out a song he had learned at Highlander and led the audience in singing it. We shall
seated. Let us be in prayer. God, it is more than a song. We feel it deep inside our spirits, a movement of your spirit that's calling us out, calling us out today and every day and into the future to be your hands and feet in the world and to continue striving for Jesus' language and speech about the kingdom come, where all are included and welcome and able to be themselves, where mutuality and reciprocity and gratitude abound. Help us, God, to be just a glimpse of what it is to be community with one another, to be in support, to be there when we're not okay, to truly welcome everybody and to try to see people through the eyes in which you see each of us. We bring our full selves to you today, God, wherever we are in life and whatever needs are most pressing for each of us that we feel rooted in your love and firmly grounded in your promises and that you are with us, you are present, and you walk with us now. We give you thanks for Christ, for Jesus who walked amongst us and who left us with these beautiful stories and ways to be and to live. And this prayer, uniquely written by Fred, let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught. In dwelling God, infused throughout all existence, we honor you with many names. Your realm is within the human heart. We accept life for all that it can be on earth as throughout all creation. May we continue to draw sustenance from this earth and may we receive forgiveness equal to our own. May we ever move from separation toward union to live in grace with love in our hearts forever and ever. Amen. We invite you to add your prayers to those speak spoken already through the lighting of the candles in the front, and there's one in the back.
Beautiful, thank you, Charlie. As long as there are people who are in our community where they don't experience beloved community and the resources are not shared like the trees do in equal distribution, we're gonna keep giving generously. Our offering this morning it will be received here and some of you give through Give the Fire through your bank. And for all the ways that we give, we create community together. We're going to stand and sing the last song together. Or if you feel like you want to sit and listen and do the chorus, whatever feels right for you right now. Um, so stand or sit to sing the closing song. And life is taken in the name of hatred. So hard to take. And if we think that it's all good and we're mistaken, it's my heart is breaking. Are you left? Are you right? Pointing fingers, taking sides. We know we're gonna. By the kind of gloves they're wearing, by the color of their skin. Are you black? Are you white? Aren't we all the same inside? They grow up and I'm rise to see. We all be the same. We're both beautiful and they come together. We all be the same. So tell Show! 
drive out all the darkness. What are we waiting for? We were made to care with one another. We were made for more. Only love can try. God, I pray that our families will come together right now and seek your face. You will erase our fears and you will heal our incredible land. In the name of the only Savior, Jesus Christ, amen. Yes, we're going to cry. Um, sorry, my hands are cold. So, Sophia and Nicole, um, we're sending you out into the world. Um, these two are moving. We don't like it. They don't like it. Um, but we know that sometimes that happens, um, and we're still community. You're keeping your name tags. You can take them to the next church, <laughs> wherever you go. And um, as we have spoken to, is that we really see you as commissioning you. We're sending you out as first church people into another church and to take us with you into that place where you go. And we know that God's going to use you in amazing ways. And I hope they're ready for what is in store for you, Sophia. Yes, Sophia. Yes, you. And we know that it's also going to help the two of you because you're going to be close to each other and it'll be less stress on you, Nicole, for all the traveling. And we just bless you on your way. So let's pray for Sophia and Nicole. God, we give you thanks for Sophia and Nicole and for the amazing just hospitality and welcome that they have extended to so many people in this church the way that they were welcomed and the ways that they have given so fully of themselves in volunteering here at the church and the Welcome Center and leadership council and in so many countless ways and so God as they depart from Phoenix we ask you God to go before them to be with them to be their rear guard and that in all ways God that you would keep us united through the body as you do God and that you would bless them until we meet again in your name we pray amen, amen. bless you boss thank you, <laughs> thank you, bless you everybody both. we're gonna miss that I feel every time I walk in here. I miss your smiles. I'm gonna miss the music. Lord, please, <laughs> don't stop. Because I'll be online listening every Sunday. So I really, really love you guys so much. And I wish Matt was here, so just extend that. Because I am in love with you guys. We're in love with you too. Thank you. So we're, we're praying that they'll be back. They didn't sell their house. They're renting it with that kind of hope and vision in mind. Um, so thank you so much, and we wish you and prayers for you um, in your new home and in your new, your new church home. And we know you're going to find one, too. 
As we close out today, we're celebrating uh, Pride this month and our open and affirming stance. And so there's rainbow cake and our church anniversary cake and whatever um, in sandwich making. So you can join us for that. And so uh, as we close today, um, we're going to sing, we're going to dance, we're going to celebrate. We got flags. You can come up front and dance and do whatever you like. So the worship has ended. Told me when I was young, we are both super sized. She rolled my hand, put my lipstick on, in a glass of her boots. There's nothing wrong with loving who you buy, she said, cause God make it perfect day. So hold your head up, girl, then you'll get far. Listen to me when I say, I'm beautiful. Just be a queen, don't be a drag, just be a queen, don't be a drag, just be a queen, don't be. Give yourself prudence and love your friends. Someone can rejoice your truth. And for religion, nothing is secure. I must respect myself and speak by you. A different lover is not a sin, but live capital G O D. I'm on the